Welcome to the mole and stoichiometry part two. Before we can get to the mole and stoichiometry, we have to be able to name compounds and write formulas. So in this video, we're going to be writing chemical formulas and writing formulas and naming hydrates. So hydrates are a special class, and we'll do those at the end. So when you're going to write chemical formulas, notice that every compound has a cation and an anion, or the beginning and the end. So if either of the words are names of polyatomic ions, which you're going to remember from the back of your notes, write down the formula in charge for the ions. If not, it's a single element, so just write down its formula in charge. And then add subscripts to make enough of each ion so that the charges cancel. All of these compounds are going to end up being neutral. So let's start with aluminum oxide. Aluminum. Al is plus 3. Because it's always plus 3, that's something you have to memorize. Oxide. Since it ends in I, that's just the element oxygen. And it's minus 2 because it's from group 16 which means I'm going to need two of these Al plus 3s and three of these O minus 2s in order to get the charges to cancel. So that'll be Al2O3. Magnesium is Mg with a plus 2 charge. Chromate is CrO4 with a minus 2 charge. So that'll those will cancel out on their own, so it's just MgCrO4. If you need to have multiple of a polyatomic ion, add parentheses before the subscript. So NH4 is plus 1, and sulfide is sulfur, and it's minus 2. So obviously I'm going to need two of these ammoniums. So when I have ammonium and I need two of them, instead of just putting a 2 at the end, because that looks like 42 hydrogens and only one nitrogen, I want to have sub parentheses first so that I have two groups of NH4. And then sulfite is the single element S. If you see a Roman numeral, that's the oxidation number or the charge for that element. So iron 3 means that iron has a charge of plus 3. Permanganate, MnO4 minus 1. You're going to need three of those. So it'll be Fe, MnO4, 3. So I can have three of those permanganates, three times the negative 1. If there's number prefixes before either element name, it's a covalent compound. You don't have to bother with canceling the charges. The number prefixes will do it for you. So dinitrogen means two nitrogen. Pent oxide means five oxygen. So that's N2O5. If the compound's an acid, look at the root to determine the main ion and the prefixes and suffixes to determine the number of oxygens. So I see that this root is sulfur, so this is going to be a sulfur acid. And the prefixes and suffixes, hydroic, remember hydro means binary, so just H and something else. So in this case, it'll be H and S. Now the charges still have to cancel, just like in any other compound. Hydrogen is plus one, group one. Sulfur is minus two, because it's in group 16. So I'll need two of the hydrogens, so this will be H2S. My next one has the root phosphor, which comes from phosphorus, and the suffix ic, which tells me that it is ternary, based on the 8 ion. Ternary based on the 8 ion. So, phosphoric acid, it's going to start with hydrogen, which is a plus 1, and phosphate, PO4 minus 3. So I'm going to need three of those hydrogens to cancel out the phosphate, so H3PO4. And then for my last one, chlor is my root, so that's chlorine. And then hypoos, that tells me that it's ternary. The us tells me that it's based on the ite ion, but the hypo tells me that it's one less, one less oxygen. So one less oxygen than whatever the ion is. So chlorate is ClO3. Chlorite is ClO2. So hypochlorite is just ClO. Hydrogen is plus one. All of the chlores are minus one. So those charges cancel. HClO. So here's some writing formulas for you to practice on your own. Please pause the video now and practice these on your own. Hopefully you did that. So we've got ammonium, this is NH4+, and thiocyanate, 
which is S, C, N, minus. A plus one, a minus one, those are going to cancel out, so this is just going to be N, H, 4, S, C, N. Now we have vanadium V, vanadium plus five. Fluoride, since it's in group 17, is going to be minus one, so I'll need five fluorines, so this will be V, F, five. My next one is silver, AG plus one. Fluoride is F minus, just like it was before. Those charges cancel on their own, so this is just AGF. Now we have iodous acid. Acid starts with H. Us means it's from the ite ion. So IO3 is iodate, IO2 is iodite, and IO2 and IO3 are all minus one charge, so the charges cancel. The next we have xenon hexafluoride. See that number prefix tells me that I don't have to bother with the charges. Xenon hexafluoride, six fluorines. And the last one, copper one, Cu plus one, sulfide. Since it ends in I, that's the single element sulfur with a minus two charge. I'll need two of the coppers to balance the sulfur, so that'll be Cu2S. All right, so here's six more. Practice them on your own. Okay, so hopefully you did that. We're going to start with aluminum. This guy is Al plus 3. And acetate, C2H3O2 minus. Sometimes you'll also see acetate as CH3COO minus. That's written more in the way that the molecule is structured. So really think of either of these things as acetate. You might see it one way or the other. So since acetate is a minus one and aluminum is a plus three, I'm going to need three of those acetates. ALC2H3O2, three. Make sure you put the parentheses before the subscript. Next we have beryllium, Be plus two, group two, so I know it's plus true. Hydroxide is OH minus, so since OH is minus one, I'll need two of them. This is Be, OH, two. This is the most common one people forget Roman uh, forget parentheses on because it's just an OH. But without the parentheses, there's two hydrogens and only one oxygen, and we want two hydrogens and two oxygens. So for the next one, there's a little bit of a typo here. This should be diiodine pentoxide instead of diiodide pentoxide. But you see these number prefixes here, which tells you you don't have to worry about how many of each thing. Diiodine is two iodines. Pentoxide is five oxygens. So I2O5. For the next one, ooh, we have an acid. And so this acid is a hydroic acid, which tells me it's just H and something else, only two elements total. And the chlor tells me that the root is chlorine. And since hydrogen is plus one and chlorine is minus one, it's just HCl. That's it. So for our next one, we have phosphorus trichloride. Oh, look at that, another number prefix, which tells us we don't have to worry about balancing charges. So phosphorus is just phosphorus, and trichloride is three chlorines. And then for our last one, we have potassium. That's K. Bromide is Br. Since potassium is plus one and bromine is minus one, it's just KBr. The last thing we're going to get to today is hydrates. Hydrates are ionic compounds that trap water within their structures. Both the name and the chemical formula specify how much water is contained within the structure. So when you're going to write the formula for hydrates, write the formula for the ionic compound using the rules you learned earlier, then add a dot and the correct number of waters taken from the prefix. If you're going to name them, write the name for the ionic compound using the rules you learned earlier, and use number prefixes just like with covalent compounds with the suffix hydrate to signify the number of water molecules within the structure. For example, sodium sulfate decahydrate. So we have the formula for sodium sulfate, then a little dot, then 10, because deca is 10, waters. So if we have barium chloride, barium chloride is Ba. Cl2. Barium is plus 2, Cl is minus 1. Then a dot, then dihydrate means 2 waters. FeCl3 is iron, 3 chloride. 
I know that because chlorine is minus 1, so iron has to be plus 3 to get the charges to cancel. And I see 6 waters, so hex uh, hydrate. All right, so now you've got writing chemical formulas and hydrates. I hope we will see you again next time.